Hello everyone, it's Kyle here, and in this week's video I'm going to teach you how to make a program that measures the average rotation speed of an EV3 motor. So the program I'm going to show you how to make today measures the average rotation speed of an EV3 motor in either degrees per second or RPM, whichever you choose to use. Now the thing that's really unique about the program I'm showing you today is that it doesn't need any external sensors to calculate RPM. It uses the internal rotation sensor within the motor and the timer that's built into the EV3 brick. So it's using the hardware that already exists within the EV3 brick and the motor, which is a pretty awesome thing. There are two methods for measuring the rotation speed of a motor which give you slightly different results and would be used for different applications. The program that we're going to be making today measures the average rotation speed of the motor since the program has started up until that point. There's another method which is where you take the instantaneous speed of the motor and that's going to be the focus of next week's video so you don't have to worry about that for now. And as I mentioned before, we can program these programs to measure the rotation speed in either degrees per second or RPM, which is short for revolutions or rotations per minute. The first program that I'm going to make today is the program that measures the motor's average speed in degrees per second. And the reason why I'm starting with the one in degrees per second is because it's just a little bit easier to program in the EV3 software. The very first part of the program is you're going to want to reset the motor rotation of the motor you're going to be measuring the speed of. So in my case that's port A. You're also going to want to reset one of the timers so you can accurately measure the time. After that you're going to set the motor that you're measuring the speed of to start running. So I'm just going to continuously run motor A at 75% power and measure its average speed. Then after that we're ready to actually make the program that measures the motor speed. So take out a loop and after that directly inside the loop take out another motor rotation block. This time set it to measure degrees and then take out a timer block. Set that to measure time and this is going to measure time in seconds. Directly after that place a math block and set it to divide. So and then set up the math block such that it's dividing the degrees by the number of seconds. So this is degrees divided by seconds or degrees per second uh, and that's how we calculate that speed. Now we want to display it to the EV3 screen so we can examine it. So take out one of these text blocks and then uh, plug in the result to port B of this text block. And in port A you can add a little label that you want to display alongside of the value. So I'm going to put uh, degrees per second as the label to display next to it and then we're going to take out an EV3 display block and place that right after that we're going to set that to text pixels and then wired so then we can plug in this result into here and it'll display the text on the EV3 screen now if you want to learn more about using these text blocks and using these display blocks I recommend you see my tutorial on uh, printing things to the EV3 display and I'll put the link up to it right here after that one final step is to add a weight block, set it for whatever you want really. I set mine to one half second at the end here and the reason why is this slows down the display speed on the EV3 because without this the display is going to update with new numbers too quickly for you to be able to see what exactly the numbers even are. So one half second gives you enough time to look at the number and be able to interpret and process them with your eyes. And this is our completed average degrees per second program. Now that we have our program up and running, you can see that the motor's average speed is displayed on the EV3 screen in degrees per second. And you can tell this is the average speed as opposed to instantaneous speed because when I stall the motor, you can see that the average speed slowly drops and doesn't drop immediately to zero. Then when I release it again, you can see that the average slowly increases now that the motor speed has increased again. Now that we can calculate the motor speed in degrees per second, you might now want to know how to calculate the average motor speed in RPM. So here's the program that we just made that calculates the speed in degrees per second, and since much of the process for calculating RPM is the same, I'm just going to show you how to convert one into the other. So what you're going to do is first, instead of measuring degrees, you're going to change this to measure rotations but you're going to plug it right back in again to this division block so now it's rotations divided by seconds 
and instead of plugging this directly into this uh, text block we're going to add another math block in between so go to math and set this to multiply and you're going to take the result uh, put this in here and then multiply this by 60 and that's because there are 60 seconds in one minute so this is rotations divided by seconds then multiply by 60 to get rotations divided by minute or revolutions per minute and then you're going to take this result plug it into B and then you might also want to change the label that's displayed alongside it so instead of degrees per second you might want to uh, display RPM alongside the text and this is how you calculate the average RPM of a spinning motor. With our new program up and running, you can see that the EV3 screen now displays the average motor rotation speed in revolutions per minute. What are some of the applications of a program that measures the average speed of a motor? Now the first thing that comes to mind is you can certainly use this program to make a drive straight algorithm. You can make it measure independently the rotation speed of the left drive wheel and the right drive wheel and have it compare across each other. The thing is though I've already made another drive straight program that's a little bit more efficient than this method and you can check that out over here. Another thing that's really cool is uh, since you can measure the average speed of the drive motors and if you know the diameter or the radius of your wheel what you can do is then estimate the linear speed of your robot as it drives around across a surface and knowing the distance that you need to travel you can use the linear velocity and the distance to estimate exactly how long the robot will take to get from point A to point B. So for FLL teams this might be useful in helping you estimate how long it might take for one mission to complete and help with uh, strategizing and planning out your time for the robot game. So those are some applications to keep in mind for this average rotation speed program. And be sure to tune in to next week's video where I teach you how to make a different program that measures a motor's instantaneous rotation speed. Thank you for watching my tutorial this week. If you haven't already, click here to check out my new book. It's called Building Smart LEGO Mindstorm PV3 Robots, and it's now available on Amazon. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every Thursday. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, drop your suggestion in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.